Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' simulations and this one is called Our Solar System 4.5 billion years later. I'm sure you can already feel where this is going to go so this is going to be already really uh, pretty crazy. Um, this is from the user gamer lover 118 so a massive thank you to them for sending this in but fat fair ado. Let's check it out. So, future solar system simulations. I do quite like these. They're always interesting. So, there it is, 4.5 billion years later. Right, what has the sun done to everything? Let's have a look. Okay. So, we're in the present, we're in the present times here. And now we swap to the future. And, oh, yeah. Here you go. Right. So, fancy colours. I like it. Okay. What is Gong Gong? Right, anyway. So, Earth is the closest planet to the sun. So, our solar system, 4 or 5 billion years later. Note, this simulation can be played, though not very fast. Yeah, there's a lot of particles and I can see a lot of moons in here. The sun is now a red giant and life has been reduced to existing on the far outer reaches of the system. It hosts six planets and nine dwarf planets. That's what's left. So, the sun itself, Sol, is a red giant over 9 billion years old, nearing the end of its lifespan. Its habitable zone currently reaches into the Kuiper Belt, though it is extremely unstable at this point. It was rumoured to have swallowed two inner planets, though their names are lost to history. Oh no! <laughs> right, so Earth, the closest planet to the Sun here. Oh yeah, oh, that's not looking great, is it? Oh uh, yeah. Once home of humans, it has been reduced to nothing but a scorched rock. No atmosphere remains and it is tidally locked. Being so close to the uh, Sol, though it did migrate outwards a bit as the Sol expanded, so the Sun expanded. So what was it sitting at? So it's sitting at 1.4. It's sitting at roughly an old, a current day Mars orbit, roughly. So that is Earth. Next up we've got Mars. And where's the moon gone? Is that an orbit of the star? Where, 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 where did the moon go? Um, so, Mars. Ancient humans did try to colonise this planet at one point, but its harsh environment proved too much to the obscenary uh, wealthy that moved here. If you look closer, you might even see the crater where a nuclear reactor blew the whole colony off the face of the planet. Similar to Earth, it is tightly locked and lacks an atmosphere. So, again, another scorched world. Where's that crater? I think, is that it there in the south? Looks like it. A little hard to spot it because it is tightly locked. If we do a bit of manual interference. See if we can spot the. Oh, don't do that. Where is it? There, yeah. That was a. That's a crater of a once colony bar, looks of things. So, not great. So, not much left of Mars either. Just a scorched, uh, scorched rock there. Right, there you go. So, next up we have Ceres. The last remaining object of the asteroid belt after every object was disintegrated. It is not expected to much last much longer. It is the largest, but. It can definitely get scorched up. There it is. Not looking good. Again, yeah, completely battered. Right, now, moving on to possibly the safer haven now, the outer solar system. I'm not expecting Jupiter or Saturn's regions to be very great, though. Let's have a look at the zone. So, you can see here, it's in the Kuiper Belt, so even Neptune's distance at this point is not great. So, Jupiter. So, yeah, Jupiter's still, uh, still looking fairly similar to now. A bit of glow hots in it, a little hot glows, but... That's about it. Uh, the biggest of the system now boosts an awesome ignited atmosphere, though not much else has changed. It has five major moons. So Io. So and any any visual changes? I mean, we'll have a quick briefly. We know we obviously know and love all these objects. Io looks different. The volcanoes of Io spewed a ton of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, leaving it very thick and very hot. So looks like Io is the new Venus. Basically, is yeah. Right there's Io. Europa. I'm guessing this is all the water on it would have got came and gone now. So that's all that's left. Uh, Europa. The Miss Moon was once a candidate for human colonization, but all the water had blew away after the sun became too luminous. Yep. So that is now a wreck. Ganymede. It's looking a little different customization wise. Similar to Europa, all of its oceans dried up, losing about half of its mass in the process. Yeah, because Ganymede supposedly has a nice ocean hidden in it somewhere. And then Callisto. So, like Io, surprisingly, gained a thick atmosphere of sulfur dioxide. And like Europa and Ganymede, lost all its water. It has an atmosphere now, so that's a yeah another another new Venus analog. So there you go. And what is this doing here? What? Right. So the moon, Luna. Interestingly, this was once the moon of Earth, though much larger back then. It seems that the sun pushed Luna away from Earth, and Jupiter caught it, losing some of its minor moons in the process. Yeah, the moon would have caused a bit of trouble. So. Oh, Jupiter's picked up a new moon. There you go. Okay, that answers the question I asked earlier. Where'd the moon go? Then obviously Jupiter's got all of its other minor objects, which are all going to be good glowing hot at this point. Yeah, 500 degrees on some of these. Yeah, okay. So pretty hot there. Okay, moving on. Saturn. Now, that's how, how Titan doing. 
Interesting. It's tied to must be a really hot Venus, I'm guessing. Right, so Saturn, no more rings here. They would have long disappeared. Uh, Saturn once had beautiful rings, but they slowly dissipated over time. It has seven major moons and also lost many of its outer minor moons. So, first up, we have a good old Mimus. Apparently, with another crater. A big crater after a minor moon has Saturn crashed into it. He's got the main crater. Oh, it's got two. <laughs> Poor old Mimus, man. That's had a rough life, hasn't it, at this point? Uh, next up, we have um, going to Enceladus. So, again, this probably would have all melted away and then evaporated a little while back. So, there's Enceladus. This was a source for most of Titan's terraforming materials. Interesting. Tephys. So, there's Tephys. Something about the sun's scorching glow uh, unlocks strange glowing rocks on Tephys' surface. How very interesting. Okay, there's Tephys. And we have Rhea, which is there, yes, on the outer edge of the inner moon region. Actually captured one of Saturn's minor moons for itself. <laughs> there you go, so it's got one of the small ones. Okay. No changes there. And then the bossy, we've got Dione. Some unknown large object threw Dione into unstable orbit. Okay, unknown large object, huh? What could that be? And then Titan, I'm guessing, is now a Venus as well, a Venus analogue. Um, this was once the major outpost of humans once um, the sun got too luminous, but now even this is too hot. The only breathable gas that remains is argon. Oh, so, yeah, Titan, it was colonised at one point, but not so great now. There it is. Okay. And then lastly, Iapetus. Yeah, what's Iapetus doing over here? A minor moon crashed into Iapetus, leaving a crater similar to Mimus. This also resulted in a small ring. Aha. Okay. Nice. Cool. That is all of the major Saturn moons. Right. So. Moving on to Farns. Formerly named Uranus in 2000... So... 2620. To stop school children from giggling on its name. Oh, you uncultured. <laughs> um, its new name is derived from its prosperous name. It has five major moons. Oh, okay. So, what is going on in the former Uranian system? And so, for, where's the old Miranda? That's the first of the major moons, despite it's being a, quite a small little moon anyway. Where is Miranda? There it is. Any water it had evaporates, mate, in the new smallest random moon in the solar system. Okay. I mean, the, obviously, the Uranian moons are not really... They're all just rocks, really, aren't they? A carbon dioxide atmosphere began to appear as it warmed up. So it could be hidden elements underneath these moons. Though we do not know a lot about what these moons, you know, what's going on underneath. Uh, Umbral. It's already heavily crater moon suffered massive collision. I mean, Miranda was the only one, I believe, that Voyager really had a close look at. So the other ones are all longer shots. You know, they, it wasn't close-ups. You, know, you know, these moons are still a bit of a mystery. I mean, even, even Triton around Neptune had a bit more... Uh, screen time than uh, some of the Uranian moons so you know these moons are still you know very highly unexplored we don't even have a full map of Miranda I don't think or, or even all of them I don't think there is a full map of all these guys because they've only ever been seen from one side um, if I'm wrong correct me but I believe that is the case um, Titania yeah it must be yeah yeah it has got to be uh, anyway similar to Titan a base was set up here but it did not last long the process of making the moon Hattel was interrupted midway leaving only a research base Hattable Okay, how old is the surface here? So we're minus 107. So I mean, it's this is out of the heat, or the out of the heat. Last we got Oberon here. This moon was designated as a dump site for toxic materials. Now it has reduced to a green glow in nuclear wasteland. So that is not where you want to go. You can see the nuclear waste going. The sun is still enormous, by the way. It's the first time we've actually looked back at the sun here. So even from uh, Uranus, or now known as Farns, the sun is still a pretty big monster. So there you go. Okay, moving on to. Neptune, so Neptune's still called Neptune, thank god. Alright, what's going on over here? Alright, what's going on? Triton, I'm guessing, is gone at this point. Alright, so there is Neptune. The inner moons are still there, though. Interesting, because you think Titan would take the inner moons with it. Neptune once had a large moon named Triton, which orbited retrograde and it got torn apart after it got too close to the planet. This gave Neptune a beautiful blue retrograde ring system. So that's what's left of Triton, and yeah, the new rings. Okay. A Neptunian mothership. Where is that? I think I just saw it. Was it? I did see something. Or did I? Oh there, oh, there it is, yeah. So, in orbit of Neptune. A peaceful alien species colonised Neptune recently. Their motherships orbit Neptune, assisting any human travellers passing by. They are well known for their masterful culinary practices. Okay. So that's all that's going on at Neptune. So Neptune's here looking pretty good. 
knows a lot of life, uh, a lot of life in Neptune uh, in region. Right, so moving on, Pluto. What's going on with Pluto here? Whoa, Pluto's looking very different. 51 degrees here. What is going on? That is an atmosphere. It is. Pluto was the first real planet to be colonised after humans left Titan. Now being one of the hottest colonies, it has been reduced to a nearly abandoned penal colony. Orange grass grows across its surface and rocks have oxidised purple after a breathable atmosphere was established. 51 degrees, but... Hattable. Very, very warm, yeah, okay. Also, you got Charon as well. What's going on over here? Again, it's also got some lights on it, okay. Pluto and Charon looking pretty good for themselves. The first world planets we colonised, um, Charon... It's more like a binary partner than the moon. It threw out every other asteroid moon Pluto once held. A moon base was set up here to search for more habitable locations to colonise. I mean, at this point, at, once you're at Pluto, there isn't really much else that much further out. Pluto is one of the larger... Or is the largest body in the Kuiper belt that we know of. It's a little larger than Eris, but Eris has more mass. But Pluto and Eris, I mean, that's your, they're your best bets, really, for size. Right, so what is going on here, then? I mean, Charon itself is still quite, quite a large object compared to a lot of the things out here, so... And what was it in kilometers? What was it, about thousand? Is it a thousand? No, Six hundred four. Yes, yeah, so even that. I mean, that's bigger than a lot of the other things, right? So, Orcus of and Vamp. Yes, yeah, so Orcus's moon. And then we've got Mako Mako first. We'll make make. Here they are. Right. What's, ooh, looking very classy. Okay. Right. Thirty-five degrees. So Mako Mako was the second dwarf planet recognized after Pluto. It has a mostly desert climate with reddish sand beneath sparse vegetation. It was here that humans developed the technology to replenish the atmospheres, as the dwarf planets they inhabit cannot hold on to them for long. It has two moons. So we've got Hun Hunania, which is... Oh, that's very large. The name translates to hidden due to the fact that it's very hard to see. It is also extremely large and may cause Makamake to search rotation over time. And lastly, we have Alora here. Its size and surface colour suggests a collision with Makamake form this moon. It is also home to unusual glowing red crystals. Voila. Okay, very nice. I like the design of this. This is quite an interesting sort of take on the uh, the future solar system, actually, with like, you know, custom colonised objects and stuff. Uh, I quite like this. I, I do like these alternate solar system reality, you know, like alternate realities or future scenarios, stuff like that. I really do like these, so, you know, you get bonus points for that. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, Orcus and Vamp next, yep. So, I know a Vamp, that's a moon, Orcus's moon. Orcus looking pretty, uh, pretty swell here as well. Look at this, right. Grey green. Got Ergo, not heard of that one. So Orcus, a very swampy dwarf planet that contains lush green vegetation. Unfortunately, the surface is prone to flooding, making yet another imperfect colony. It harbours two asteroid moons and a binary park named Vamp. So we've got a moon called Club, a tiny asteroid that spins extremely quickly, which is there. We've got Ergo, that's an interesting one. Uh, the larger, the more massive the two moons of Orcus and lightly shepherded Club close to Orcus. Amazingly, it is made of mostly gold. Then lastly, Vamp at the end. This is a real moon as far as I know. I don't know about the other two, but I know this one's a real moon. The less massive partner of the binary system it is very dark, very volcanic, and orbits retrograde. Okay. And I can never say this one. Quara. Quara. I can never say that one. But yeah, we've got this one next. So over here. Ooh, look. Ooh, again, this one's probably the most hatable of the lot. 15 degrees. Looking pretty, pretty lush. By far the best candidate for life at this stage of the sun's life. It has a very near perfect orbit, leaving very little variation in temperature. It has an ecosystem very similar to ancient Earth. A beat of extremely high speed winds. Most humans that have survived lived here. It has one moon and boosts an impressive double ring system. We've got Way What. The moon was likely formed by a collision. Keeps the rings intact. Over there. Cool. So I'm guessing that is the main place of humanity. The issue is how many people are still around at this point in the future because this guy is not the size of Earth. You know, you're not going to fit as many people on there. 517 kilometres. I mean, you're not going to, you know, a billion people would be a squeeze, let alone the whole population of humanity at this point, unless we've ventured into the stars by this point. <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. You know, how many people could you actually fit on these guys? Unless you have very, very tall, dense buildings and things like that, but interesting. Um, right, who's next? So we've got Iris, so the other large um, of the dwarf planets. So... Over here, this one obviously has a much more eccentric orbit, so getting a good temperature on this guy is going to be very, very difficult. So there it is. From the start, Iris was never meant to be colonised. Its eccentricity was... Exactly as he's saying it here. Its eccentricity was simply too high to allow for a stable colony. It is, however, used as a mining outpost where other colonies get their materials from. It has one moon. So if they're, if they're transporting materials between these objects at this sort of distance, then humanity must have some sort of star drive. You know, something to get them across places fast, because it would take for ages to move go from Iris to some of the other dwarf planets. I mean, where, where, where? so there's Iris. It's currently on its further 
So it's currently at its further part of its orbit. So that's quite a distance. You've got to jump from Eris back to the main Kuiper belt. So let's going from Eris to Orcus. That's quite a jump. That's a whole solar system jump almost. That's a whole inner and outer solar system together jump. Yeah, that's quite a distance. So yeah, Eris. Interesting. And then also we have Dysomia here, the moon. An almost polar opposite moon to Eris due to its dark surface and the albedo. It's frequently buying from resources. Looking good. Okay, nice. Next up we got Gong Gong. So what is Gong Gong? I've not heard of this one. It's got an atmosphere though. Oh, what is this? Like Eris, this dwarf planet is used to mine for resources. It has a thin mainframe atmosphere. This is rapidly the wind and it has one moon. Then we've got Ziang Lu over here. This moon is thought to be a captured asteroid due to highly unusual fact that it does not share colours with Gong Gong. <laughs> yeah. Right, and then lastly, Sedna. Again, it's going to be a crazy orbit, so good luck colonising this guy. It's on its far point at, far point from the sun at this point. So there's Sedna. Right, so the you know the furthest point that we got on this system's map. So what's going on? So it's receiving light from the star. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's actually colonised. A group of isolated colonists move here to emulate a simpler time in human history. They have very little contact with other colonies, so it is an unknown how they will survive in such a cold world. In fact, there are oceans of liquid nitrogen and methane most of the time, so that's not water. Minus 201 degrees, so a very, very bizarre world. It's got lights on it, though, so it does have some sort of thing. That's a very, very, very far distance from the sun, as you can see. If we go to... Uh, we can close out. I hope you enjoyed. I most certainly did, good sir. So... Uh, we want realistic. So, yeah, the sun's looking pretty small, even from Sedna. You know, that's a that's a red giant, and that this, you know, Sedna is just that far away. So, sun's not looking so great from here. So, there you go. But yeah, that does it for the future. This future solar system scenario. So, sun's pretty big and spooky. There you go. Zero point nine five AU. It's very large. Yep. Okay. So that is what's left of the solar system at this point. So if you get your line up, yeah, sun's looking pretty big. All the way down here, so you've got Jupiter, the renamed Uranus, as Farns, you've got Neptune, and obviously the Rockies, not much going on there, Earth is way superior in everything else in size in the Rocky department, and there you go, there's your lineup, so Pluto and Eris up there as well, and yeah, everyone else is, uh, they're not looking so great for a lot of these, there you go, series. Very, very nice indeed. So again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system, Game Lover Triple One Eight, for sending this in. Really enjoyed that. I do like these future scenario ones; they are very, very interesting. Always like to read the descriptions. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think down below in the comments of this system. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. Let's even go for a hundred likes on today's video as well, guys. Subscribe for more helps on journey to fifty thousand subscribers as well. And that will send on everybody. Make sure you have a great day out there. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you.